Hello everyone. Those of you who've watched the other videos that I've made, like I say before, I got 800 videos of them, all bad, um, might realize here as I go through here, and I won't be able to do anything with that. Layers, tablet pressure. I try to do this here. Uh, let's see. Interesting that this is not going to work. And there it is. Okay. Well, notice that for the first time I've actually brought in a circle. And the reason why I'm bringing in this circle is we're going to look at something developed by a great group of students um, of mine. And it basically we ended up calling it not the unit circle, but the circle of units. And it's a set of derived units, not the basic seven units that we're going to talk about here before we get started. And um, you'll see a lot of things in the world built on the circle, but uh, and the circle broken up into all kinds of different divisions. But I'm going to talk about three logical ways to divide the circle. Uh, and one of them I'm going to say that's not logical is 360 degrees. So we all know I think that a circle is 360 degrees. So let's first talk about 2 pi is one revolution, or all the way around. But then also let's look at something called mills from the military. If you want to think of it, 64 hundreds of them equals one revolution. We're going to come back to that. But now instead we're going to talk about not a full revolution. We're going to talk about this logical division of 1 24th of the way around and learn to memorize it as pi over 12. And later on we're going to go back to see why many of us, um, as we learn the unit circle, we probably don't learn the most important thing is that is the divisions of 15 degrees or pi over 12. With that all said, this construct of 12 and then eventually 12 more, comes up a lot of different places. Um, you hear them in the scale of 12 notes. Um, and I presume you think about them in the day of two sets of 12, night and day. And so that's how we came up with this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to mark up basically three major points on this. So we're going to eventually get to this point of... Um, the circle of units. But before that, we've got to first realize that there are seven basic units, standard units in the SI system, system, system international. And they are basically things that you measure distance, mass, time, I'm sorry, mass, time, temperature, current, luminosity, and then the amount. And there's standards, meters, kilograms, which is an odd one, seconds, Kelvin, amps, uh, luminosity, candelas, I think, and then amount is moles. All right, so you've got these basic seven standards, but then you come upon a set of derived standards that I would argue is one of the more important things to be able to manage when you're dealing with anything scientific and easily learnable, even before you necessarily know what they are, but at the very base level in any physics class. And we're going to talk about ones that students have a hard time with, but we're going to divide them, we're going to use this kind of middle part of these lines so we can get essentially 13 things in here. And we're going to start, for a reason unbeknownst to you all, with something called specific gravity, which is a comparison actually. It is a unitless number. We're going to go up across here and we're going to talk about unit weight. And of course here up on top we're going to put force. Now, you're going to realize later on that force is going to be, unit weight is going to be force over volume, and specific gravity is going to be unit weight over unit weight. But we're now going to progress up in a standard set of progressing units. 
and we're going to start this way. The first one is going to be angular displacement, which we're going to remember again is measured in radians. That's why we talk about this. This has no units. This has no units. We're next going to talk about distance, it being a vector, area, volume, mass. A pretty logical progression here where you have unitless measures. One's a comparison. The other one is a ratio of the arc length to the radius. Distance, which is a vector. Distance squared, area, volume, and then mass. So you have basically three dimensions of distance right here. And later on you'll see there's a logical fourth dimension. We're not going to do it because it doesn't fit into our pattern of 13. Force times distance is work or energy. Energy over time is power. Energy per volume or force over area is pressure. Twist is torque. And finally, the concept of unit weight once taken down or taken up mass over volume is in fact density. And so you have fitting into this pattern a whole set of really important derived units and later on you can see we can now start to draw things across here if we want to kind of keep track of them and other units or, or we can really do a lot of constructs here but right in the middle here we want to think pretty much somehow time is very often involved and so volume over time is going to go become flow and area over time is like production and distance over time is velocity and angular displacement over time is in fact um, angular velocity force over time is um, impulse. So there's a lot of things that work out. So we always want to think about time being here in the middle. Later on, and we'll do them inside then out, we have standard units. And so we're going to realize that standard units in the metric, unitless, and unitless, the null set here, meters, square meters, cubic meters, kilograms, newtons, joules, watts, Pascals, Newton meters, kilogram per cubic meter, and Newton per cubic meter. So we have a standard set of units in the metric, and then we have a standard set of units in foot pound seconds or the English system. Unitless, unitless, we'll call that a null set, and then we have feet, square feet, cubic feet slugs, which is a tough one for many to get, pounds, foot pounds, foot pounds per second, pounds per square foot, pound feet, also known as foot pounds, slugs per cubic foot, and then pounds per cubic foot. So in this we have a construct that fits into kind of an important key construct that we all should be learning right around fifth grade and I'm just going to work again the first one eighth of the circle down here in the corner so you can realize that this is not so arbitrary this 15 degrees or pi over 12 is how far the world revolves about in an hour and so we have to remember the key values eventually to learn are 15, 30, and 45 on the circle. These first two become pretty easy. This one down here is pretty easy. And I'll skip this one for now because it's the one that no one ever shows you. And that is this pi over 12 value here. But if we want to get the particular points on a unit circle, we know sooner or later that this is really easy to do. 
This is going to be longer this way than it is up. This is the square root of 3, square root of 3 over 2, and this is 1 half. The square root of 1 is 1. And so eventually you'll see if I can scribble the first one in here and fit it. I'm going to go ahead and try it again. This number pattern is not bad. 2, 4, 6 with radicals and a plus. And the same thing, 2, 4, 6 with radicals and a minus. And so it becomes very straightforward and easy to learn one, two, three sets of numbers for these coordinates and then flip and then flip and then flip. And so if you start with that, you have a pattern. This next pattern, of course, isn't just a pattern of three slices. It's a pattern of a whole lot more, but it is quite possible to develop the schematic. And I would say within a couple of class periods, even by pure memorization in rote, because you have a picture, um, they fill in and you know whether you miss something, you should be able to get a number of these things done very quickly. So that's my first stab at it. Um, we're going to talk about it 59 different ways. You notice here I'm just trying to clean up a little bit by using some base templates underneath. Uh, using a program here, programs used to, to do this basically was uh, SketchUp just to make the circle. That's any old circle. And then Smooth Draw 3, which is a free open source program, and then Cam which is a, a program that costs, but Cam Studio is free. So this ability to go ahead and capture this and post it, of course, out to YouTube. Right, so let's finally review. The key thing here is hopefully this is predicated and already knowing that the most logical division of the unit circle is one hour time. And then you're going to go and create something that's an important concept because it's a comparison. Specific gravity, force or weight, and unit weight as the three kind of the four the three of the four corners here, and then going up in progression of units, angular displacement, which is the measured in radians or the arc length over the radius, the distance vector, radial vector, so that is distance, area of volume, three dimensions of distance, up to mass force, force dot distance or the force vector dot product with the distance vector of displacement vector is work. Work over time is power. Work over volume, energy over volume is pressure which is the same as force over area. Torque, and later on you're going to see torque times angular displacement is work. Mass density and unit weight. The units in the metric system, unitless for specific gravity. It's a comparison of something's density to the density of water at 4 degrees Celsius. But you're starting here at specific gravity, unitless, unitless, showing the null set symbol. Meters for distance, square meters for area, cubic meters for volume, kilograms for mass, newtons for force, joules for work, watts for power, Pascals for pressure, Newton meter for torque, kilograms per cubic meter for density, and Newton per cubic meter for unit weight. On the English side or the imperial side, unitless, another definition of specific gravity is the mass of something divided by the mass of an equal volume of water at 4 degrees Celsius, which is 273 degrees Kelvin, thereabouts. All right. Unitless for specific gravity, unitless for angular displacement, feet for distance, square feet for area, cubic feet for volume, slugs for mass, pounds for force, foot pounds for work, foot pounds per second for power, eventually you'll know 550 foot pounds per second equals a horsepower, pounds per square foot, you'll eventually see we talk about pounds per square inch very often. There's a relationship there of 144 pound-feet for torque, slugs per cubic foot, one slug weighs 32.2 pounds, and finally pounds per cubic foot that you're used to. 
Thanks for listening.